Jonathan Ferguson, I'm one of the curators here at the Royal Armouries and I've been asked to talk to you about a bit of an unusual object in our collection. It's currently in storage, although it was on display for many years, and it's the bird that wants to survive. So this is a, a piece of art. Uh, we do collect art related to arms and armour at the Royal Armouries. A lot of that, or most of that, is flat, traditional art, paintings and, and so forth. Um, very few sculptures are in the collection and this is one of them and it's quite a contemporary uh, piece. As you probably already spotted, it is made of guns. Um, it was produced by the artist uh, Fiel dos Santos, forgive my pronunciation, um, who's working in, or was working, uh, probably still is working, in Mozambique, um, which is a nation in Africa that's undergone quite a lot of um, trouble over the years. Uh, two civil wars, for one thing. And after the second um, civil war, um, 1970s, 80s, what happened was a lot of the uh, NGOs, charity organisations, people like Christian Aid, went in and tried to take some of the guns away, basically. Um, there were meant to be millions of guns in the country at the time, something like 5 million or more. They were able to take 200,000 from the local population. But you can't just take people's property. Uh, we can, but um, they didn't want to, so they swapped or offered, offered exchanges. So tools, uh, I presume agricultural equipment as well, bicycles. And then those were funneled to this artist collective in Mozambique. And this particular artist in 1998 created this of a black winged stilt, which is a, a, a local, um, presumably wading bird looking at it. I haven't actually looked up the bird itself. But this is the one that's made of guns. Um, so what I thought I'd do, having given you a bit of a brief history lesson, is talk through some of the bits and bobs that make up this sculpture. Um, as you might imagine, if you know anything about contemporary conflict or even historical conflict, uh, a lot of the weapons that make up this piece are Russian. Um, lots of Russian influence in the Civil War in Mozambique, um, particularly on one side. So the side that could afford it purchased the HK G3, 7.62 um, infantry rifle, and you'll see right away, probably, uh, that the back end of the bird, its tail feathers if you like, are made of a G3 butt. Incidentally, this is a section one from our collection, and you can see the workings, the buffer that's inside that green plastic stock. Obviously the one on the bird is in rather worse condition. And unsurprisingly, a lot of this sculpture is made of Kalashnikov AK. Specifically, um, this is the Chinese Type 56 version um, with a folding bayonet on it. And that's the exact variant that has been used to create this sculpture. So you can see the uh, Actually, the back half of the whole receiver of the gun, the body, has been cut, or cut off, butt stock removed, and then cut off just uh, at the magazine well. And then two of those assemblies, or what's left of them, have been welded in to form the body and the sort of stubby little wings of this bird. So they're quite key uh, core components of the, um, of the creature, if you like. What else, AK? Well, uh, the front sight block is actually from a different variant. This is from a, probably, well it's hard to tell to be honest with, with you, but probably a, a Russian um, original um, AK. It doesn't have the AKM um, slant compensator on the front. It's actually a little bit closer though to this. Anyway, you get the idea. That's the front uh, piece of barrel chopped off of Kalashnikov and welded in place. Not one of these though. We've then got, I don't know if anyone's ahead of me here, but the legs are also Kalashnikov. Bolt carrier and piston, which is normally one assembly, here it's been separated and turned into two sort of thighs for the bird. And you wouldn't get much meat off this, but that's what it is. And then the piston has been cut off and then re-welded at an angle to create the legs of the bird. So quite a creative way to, to do that. This piston shape here, this is literally like a car piston, how the gun works, that is down here. 
there are two more features here, one, but two of them. And they are, again, trigger or partial trigger mechanism assemblies or receiver portions. And this time it's the Pepysha uh, 41. Uh, Russian submachine gun, Russian design. This one is a Russian one, 1944. It's this piece here, and if I flip it round, turn it like that, you should hopefully be able to see. It's this whole um, strip of metal here with the trigger guard, the trigger, and the sliding safety catch. It's all still there. It's just a bit um, welded shut now. So everything else on here is, are essentially found objects or scrap metal. Um, we've got some sort of pipe, possibly from a car, who knows, as the neck. Um, gun parts have their limits apparently when it comes to making uh, pieces of sculpture. Bits of, bits of wire and then here, what I initially suspected was part of another firearm, is actually a, um, a clamp or more likely um, from a set of jumper cables. So the clamp end of a, of a set of uh, car jumper cables. I guess it looks more, more like a bird's head than any bit from a firearm. Um, I have read an, uh, an article discussing the, the deeper significance and the other work of um, Dos Santos, suggesting that there might be Tokarev pistol components as part of this sculpture as well. I certainly can't see them if, if they are in there. But you have, I guess in a way, the, the Pepysher SMG sort of stands for Russian influence over the conflict, um, as does the AK, which is also used by, by one side more prominently than the other, arguably. And then you have the sort of Western rival fighting against it. So there's, there's, there are layers of meaning to it as well. It's quite a striking uh, piece and it's that idea of swords into plowshares, I suppose.